Hello and welcome to Concrete Mouse Scrap More with Brenda. I'm Brenda and today we're going to show you how to make the Martha Washington Star. But before we get started, now I know this is not the right layout, but you'll see the layout once we get going. Um, once we get started, it'll it'll be fun. It's a quick, fun little block. It's got a bunch of little pieces, but it's doable. But first we want you to go check out Amanda Castor at Material Girl Quilting. Now her link's going to be in the show notes below, as well as our Facebook group, where we're having lots of fun using the rooms and chatting and showing pictures of what we're working on. And it's just a lot of fun. So, come on in. We have a lot of fun to do doing the Mar Martha Washington Star Block. Okay, so here's our layout. Now this one we're going to do the four to you know like the four where we're cutting into four to make a pinwheel because that's what usually is the very center of a Martha Washington star now I gave you the cutting instructions for the four at a time flying geese I'm doing flip and stitch because I don't mind having orphan blocks and sometimes you're the stitch and flips Sometimes these stitch and flips, I mean, they work out so nice. And you know exactly what size it's going to be. This is going to be the three and a half square by three and a half by six and a half, right? Because that's what you need for this block. Now, a stitch and flip just works very quickly. And you go from one edge. Ooh, okay. You go from one edge and hope that your fabric doesn't go down the hole. No, it did not go down the hole. And you make your flying geese that way. Now, there's a lot of excess that you've got there, but that's a big piece now that you're going to be working with, right? So you can make like little pinwheels or something for your for your stash or your orphan block stash. I mean, I'm always looking for I'm always looking for pinwheels or something. Let's do that rough edge. Let's do the one that needs a good ironing. The only problem with flip and stitch, if you're too quick on them, um, you're not straight or whatever. You know, if you can't sew with a straight line or you have problems sewing a straight line, draw it and then from point to point and then kiss just on this side of that line, not on this side. So that's, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. Okay. So now, uh, let me get this off. And we start clipping these, but before we clip off all that excess, we want to make sure that we have enough to cover. Yes, that will cover. That will cover lovely, so that one can go out. And I just, with the world's smallest scissors, you know, clip it off. And now I'm going to start, oops, I'm going to start putting this on the other side. There we go. So now, okay, so now I'm putting the other side of the flying goose on. There we go. And we have problems. Why do we have problems? No, nope, we don't have any more problems. Ugh. Why are we have? Oh, I see. It's getting big and thick. All right, the feed dogs are. Probably needing a good scrub. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. Now check before you cut. There is another one. That's good. A lot of these little half square triangles, I mean, they're useful in other little blocks, right? But you can also make a very quick little pinwheel out of it. And you always want to keep in mind you want to do a flying goose not a chevron so you want to have one going one way and the other one going the other way right okay check this yes i have good coverage nice There we go, and make sure it's flipped the right way. There we go. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And you've also just generated a bunch of little leader enders that you can now work with with your sewing, right? It's not very often, if you, once you get used to doing it this way, it's not very often you miss, you know, making that seam correctly. So, I mean, just, you know, you gotta sew like you know what you're doing. And then the skills do come. They, they, honest to God, they do come. You know, it's hard at first to believe that you're going to develop those skills because sometimes they're harder, they're harder to learn sometimes than others. But you have to believe in yourself, that's all. Okay. Put the last of this up. Okay, now we have four of these. And I'm just going to run this under, just to get the last one goose unit out. And you can do either four at a time or, or this method. I did not have, this uh, background fabric was not big enough. Because I mean, I had some challenges when it came to getting my scraps big enough. That works. So let's get that one off. There we go. So that works, and now we're just going to start placing these in. Okay, the flying goose goes this way. There. Make sure I've got coverage. Yes, I do. Nice. So depending on the size of your scraps, you know, depend, you know, like you might be able to get that seven and a quarter inch. Um, piece but I, I wasn't out of my scrap fabric oh why is that one way off wow that's that no that that'll work that'll work it'll work there we go <clears throat> there nice nice Okay. Now, the center is where it's easier to draw than it is to try and figure this out. Now, this this is this block at the end has to be six and a half. So you might have to do some squaring up. You know, depends on how you do this, right? Well, let's get our center. This is what we're going to make our pinwheel out of. And what they tell you to do is your four and a quarter, you cut your four and a quarter, and you slice it this way, and you slice it this way. You do four cuts, right? So let's just do our cuts first, and then we don't have to mark it up. So let me just grab a ruler and a rotary cutter, and we'll get this, we'll get this done. Ah. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, because you just need four little pinwheels out of it. So you might as well make the pinwheels. You might as well just make the half square triangles, right? So there we go. Okay, that's one way. This is the other way. There, now. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to sew these so that they go together like this. feeling I'm doing this wrong. I think they go together like this. Oh no. Yep, they go together that way. Sorry. Okay, so we pull all this out. Start over. So they go like this. Under the foot of your machine. You don't sew along that diagonal because see everybody does this. Everybody does this. Because you need this on that edge, that outside edge. Let me just pick these apart real quick. Hopefully I haven't got this too 
tiniest stitch. Everybody does this. I always get confused with these. You know, it's kind of like it'd be, it would be more interesting to do a larger pinwheel and do a flip and stitch than it is to do the center. Just the way they're wanting you to do it. But, hey, what do I know? Okay. And once we go through and we pull out every fifth stitch or third stitch or whatever, then this comes apart just like that, nice and easy. And there we go. And we put them like this. And that's how they go under. Yeah. You gotta have a day like this where, you know, wow, that was wrong. Because... <laughs> If you don't have those days like that, you don't know how to fix stuff, right? And you get handier with your uh, stitch ripper if you do this more frequently. You know, you get good at, like, ripping stuff apart, right? So, not that we want to make mistakes. We just know how to fix them, and we can do it quickly, right? And that's what I'm hoping to teach you guys, too. I make mistakes, you make mistakes. It's not a big deal. It's not a big tragedy. Just, you know, pull your stitch ripper out, unsew it, work for, move forward, you know. Don't get hung up on making, you know, it perfect every time. There we go. There it is. And now we stitch it like that. Okay. Now. Okay. Let me get this in. And of course the stitch ripper falls out. I might need that again, so I'm going to make sure it goes into the jar. <laughs> okay. Now you run another one of these through. Just to get all of them off at once. All of your four triangles off at once. This is now becomes my leader ender project, right? So, this is what I have. Right? So, well, that's okay. So you press to the dark. And this is what you get. Okay. Just like that. And yeah, there's a few little strings that didn't come out quite the way we wanted it to. So we'll just put this back. Not too far from where it's supposed to be. And we're going to now sew these to the red, all in the same direction, right? So this is why this is a little weird to lay out. Okay, so I can almost change my foot to a quarter inch foot. Hang on. Okay, now let's do it this way. Now the red. Now if everything has worked out right, now this is also a straight edge, right? It's not a bias edge. You're sewing the biases together, right? So you just go like that. There. Okay, here's another one done. Gee, I like that Ru Ruby uh, Star Society red. That's just such a beautiful scrap. I thought, oh, yeah, we gotta throw that in. That's a little bit of glitter. It's nice. It's nice to look at. So this is what it looks like when we're done, right? We get all that off, and we get all of this sewn together. There we go. Oops, that's not working out. There. Massaging it into place. And did I run out of... I ran out of thread. <gasps> okay, good thing I found out now. And then start running the block <laughs> through. <laughs> oh yeah, that would have happened too. Why not? Run out of thread, all this other stuff. Okay. Ugh. There we go. There. Now. 
And oops, and the foot falls off. Well, I'm having a day, aren't I? That's okay. That's all right. We're allowed to have a day. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm going to run another leader ender through there just to get all four of them off at once. Now, the temptation is to sew these all together. Right? Because you're going to clip this all off, the, the little triangle bits off. Right? But what you need to do is you need to square them up. Right? They have to measure these little squares here, these subunits, must measure three and a half. And if they don't, you end up with a pucker in your block. Right? Like it'll pucker up. So we don't want that. And they've all been sewn the same, so we're going to have this going like a, like a pineapple. Now, if you, now you're going to press it this way, because the seam is there. And they're all going to go with the red to the outside, the bright red to the outside. Just like that. Now, I'm going to take just a quick measurement to make sure that all of this is like three and a half inches. Okay, so, well, we're right on the money. Woohoo! Even after the mistake, we're on the money. Okay, so let's get off this little edge here, this little dog ear here. Let's get that out. Let's get that out of the way. And this is going to make a cute little pinwheel in the center. Isn't that adorable? Okay. So this subunit gets done next, right? Okay, so now we're just going to line these up and this edge nests, but this one does not. The top does not, but this one does. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. This nests with some big threads on there. There we go. Get that nested. Nice. Okay. Okay. Oh, so we'll get another leader ender through. Ooh, let's go backwards because that didn't work. All okay. right. Oh, okay, so now we're going to open this up. One is going to go down, this one's going to go down, and this one's going to go up. Right there, just like so. Okay. Now, we'll true test to see whether this works. Okay. Then you pop that open. And make sure, because now you can pop it open because you've clipped it. And you make sure that nests really well in the center. Okay. There we go. Now, there. Uh, there we go. Da -da -da -da. Okay, another leader ender to get that off, and you can see where this is. Okay. And now we're going to break the center. Now I crossed on this, on this side of that point, because you can see where the crosses are, and you can make sure you get your point. And because I did it on low on one side, I've got points on both sides now. So I'm going to take this and break this open. Right, so you remove the bulk. Right, so here's my, so I stayed on this side 
of the X, right? So I'm going to have my points on both sides of this fabric and then I break it, right? And then I just push this all in a circle. So now it's all pretty much going that way. It just looks like that. And I have got a reasonably good center. So now I can sew this together. So now I'm going to do the webbing trick again. I know you guys have seen this and wow, do you always do it that way? Yes, yes I do, yes I do. I line up my outside edge first and then I make sure my inner edge works. Basically, if you need to ease, this is how you do it. So if you had a little issue with putting everything together, which sometimes we do, right? Then you have to make a little ease. Okay, so now let's make sure, okay, we're going to put this through just like so. And we can pin this, let's see, grab a pin. So this is where I need to be here on the top, but I have a point I need to match on the bottom. Wow, that scared me. I don't know what that was, but there was a noise. Something moved. So there's where my pin needs to be on the bottom. So now when I sew this, I'm going to try and get as close as I can to the pin, right? And make, hopefully make both my points at once. Now I'm going to try and slide that under the foot and I'm going to try and stay to this side, right? And all the way down, there we go. And I think I've got it. Now, oh, I did the best I could. I did the best I could with it. There we go. And this. There. I will show you on the next row too. So you can see this, what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to make all my points. Because there's points that match up with points in this block. And it looks too, it'll look rough if you don't have all of them matching up. Right, so. Get another leader ender through. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to open this up just like this and I'll put it back on the board so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So that point I made. Right? Because I matched, I pin matched those points so I wouldn't lose them. So now I'm going to work on this side, this part, and I'm going to try and do the same thing with this and I'll give you, hopefully, you get the right angle and you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, get this just like so. <laughs> okay, now this is where we're going to try and match, pin match those points. So I start it, and I go like, you know, three, four, five, whatever pins in. Then I pin match the top right in the center of that pin, right? So it's coming out, it's coming out right where I need it to come out. And now I'm going to try and get this here, whoops. Did I get it? Yes, I did. Wow, that looks weird. So this is just a little off, but it's more than an eighth of an inch. So this seam, you can see the red through it. And for some reason, it didn't, the, I cut it and it didn't check right. It didn't, the flipping stitch didn't work. So you want to get this now as close as you can to your pin. And you try and slide it under the foot and you hand crank and you pull it out. There, and now you get to the other side. And now hopefully you've made your, your marks on both of them. You've made both of your points. And you do the same when you're going the other way too. Like you, you try and make that point because that's what makes your block so sharp. Okay, I'm gonna put this through. Okay, now we go the other way. Good thing we had lots of leader enders. 
and I've made my point. I missed that point there with this, but with this here the, on this side, but I've made the point so I didn't lose my outer points. So, okay, let's go. Oh, whoa. Okay, let's, let's see what we can do here. I think we have to go the other way. This goes, all right. So, now, I'm going to just start running this through. Now, on my webbing, I'm going to cut that first. And then I'm going to take my pin, and I'm going to put my pin right in where that X is here with the sewing. My X marks the spot. And now you want to put it right down where those that point is there. And you can pin it if you want to. I mean, sometimes a pinning pushes it out a little bit, but it's okay. So now we're going to go this way. Okay. Okay. And now all the way to and then you push your pin under your foot just a little go under and you stay on this side pull your pull your pin and do your magical mask meeting I was actually surprised that I found some plaid in my scrap because normally that's the first thing I ends up getting used so I could make these kind of a fun little block. And another leader ender goes through. Now those cutoffs end up being quite a decent size leader ender. Okay. So now we've made our point. So that point is really good right there. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we get started. And I break my webbing. Get my red webbing clip so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, well, X marks the spot, and there, okay, now hold it, now this is where it's helpful to have two pins, if you're doing like competition, and you're putting this quilt into a quilt show, that's where you would use your double-ended pins. You drop your, your pin at a right angle down, and then you would you would put the pin on either side. Get the foot up just a hair. There we go. There. And now that's done. Okay, we get our nesting. Okay, we get to our nesting area. Yeah, competition where you pin when you're doing a competition quilt. A little different game. Did it make a wobble? Yes. No, it didn't. That's good. Uh, I made a little wobble. Got hung up on a high spot. Okay. And now we just line up this edge. And we're good. Okay. So let me get another leader ender through on this other quilt that I'm making and I will get to our ta -da moment. So this is our Martha Washington star. Didn't it turn out lovely? Um, like I say, I did have to deviate from the pattern and I am going to give you both cutting instructions for this being like six and a half by three and a half and then the three and a half inch squares flip and sew. So you have all of that handy there with you. Um, my scraps simply weren't big enough to cut that seven and a quarter inch square from. So, I mean, you know, you got to be able to adjust and think on your feet. So, uh, I did with the cutoffs, with the stuff I cut off and you watched, I did make two lovely little cute broken dishes 
blocks that I thought were just darling coming out of this. So I thought, okay, I might have used more fabric, but I have two cute, cute little blocks to, to play with now. So that's okay. We can put them into our orphan blocks. So um, what's coming up next on our channel is our orphan block series. So I hope you, you join us for that one. We've got a few outside the box thinking ideas. So it'll be a fun little one, but we might have to break it up a little bit differently because that orphan block could take a lot more work. So I hope you have an amazing week ahead and everything goes great for you and you have all sorts of creative, fun things going on. Okay, you take care until we see each other again. Bye! My husband and I would love to thank you for coming along with us on our quilting journey and the YouTube adventure that we're on. We have some wonderful plans for 2023 and it includes a lot more like with the Facebook group and the rooms feature and sewing and hanging out with people. Those monthly Zoom sew dates are still in the works. We have a lot of fun ideas coming up for 2023 and we hope you share, like and subscribe with your friends. That little notification but button and subscribing to us really helps us out. Commenting helps us out too. So if you like what you're seeing, let us know. Even send us a like a, a heart on the comment. That, that helps so much for us. Okay, you have an absolutely fabulous 2023 and all of our best wishes for you in the future. Okay, take care. Bye.